good morning. Um, I was actually in worship, wasn't planning on doing a live. Um, and God said you need to share it with the people. Some of you are so familiar with me or think you're familiar with me that you won't get this, but that's okay. It's, it's, it's for who it's for. Um, I entitled this message, From the Other Side from the side of ministry, from the side of leadership, from the side of the empire builder. I want you to, this morning, just real quick, if, you don't, if you're not able to stay during the duration of this message, call your mother, call your pastor, call those who mentor you and pour into you, and just say, I was thinking about you. Just let them know that you love them and that you appreciate them. There's so much that is placed on people in leadership that are placed on even people who are not watch this who are not in a seat or a title who do not have a title but you look up to them they are the matriarchs of the family you are the one that is always deemed to be the strongest in your circle people lean on you that's the person you need to be calling if you know you can call that person and they'll give you a word of encouragement you know you can call that person they always you always feel strengthened after you talk to them you need to understand the walk many of you um, when you watch us on live you some of you say that you think we want to be seen this is not about being seen I posted a video not too long ago a repost of a video a couple of years ago and if you saw if you see the video on my line uh you saw i had the kind of blondish hair i had the blonde blonde whatever color that was i was trying to do i love you too pastor um and i woke up at that time i was sleeping in the church and god would give me a word i love you donzetta god would give you i love you uh, apostle venice i gotta call these people out because these are the people i'm talking about I was sleeping in the church, which was in an office, and I would, you roll out of bed, and God would give me a word just to be able to get up, just to be able to push through that day, and God said, share it with the people. I didn't have time to get glamorous. I didn't have time to comb my hair. I just got up and share it with you so you could keep pressing like I was keeping pressing. You don't know the backstory to the people that you lean on. So you need to be mindful as a, as a ministry, our church, we're, we're trying to plant food for the, for, so there won't be an issue because something's popping in the, in, in the government. We know that something is, 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 there's a transition that will never return the same, but I'm not here to talk about politics. We're trying to plant food. We're trying to make it so you can have jobs. We're trying to do mentor programs. And every time somebody gives up $5, they say we stealing or they say, you know, we, I, I will, Apostle. They say that, and we crooks, so we hypocrites. Well, let me tell you, our pastors, Pastor, Pastor Reginald and Carol Oglesby, they have the ministry show that you can choose to watch, the One Flesh show for the married people that you can choose to watch or not watch. It's your option. But they get up and press and do it anyway so that they can be uh, they can be strength to you in your marriage while they still go through the things that they go through, That while they still trying to raise their families, while they still trying to endure through their trials and tribulation, their faith walks. But they get up for you. Minister Donzetta Coleman, I said a whole name, Donzetta Coleman, yes, right. If you don't know her, you need to know her. She's the intercessor. When she sees you on these, when she calls me and she sees you on Facebook, she doesn't even know you sometimes. Some of you are friended because she told me, this person, apostle, look at this person, look what's going on. She's interceding for you while she has her family on the altar. Why she has her own situations on the altar. We praying for your marriages and some of us don't have any. We are praying for your marriages and some of us have I've been separated, disconnected, rejected. We going through some things too and we take the time to get on here. Not so that we can be seen. Half the time to be honest with you, we don't want to be seen. Half the time we don't feel like getting up talking to you. But we have to share what keeps us moving. I don't want to tell you the testimony after I've been through it. While I'm going through it, I'm ministering to you. Whatever God deposits, deposits in me for me to get up and keep moving on a daily basis, I share with you 
so that you can get up and get moving because you may not need it a year from now once I've been delivered. You may not need it a year from now because some people say, well, she's a worldly apostle. And is she really saved? Mind your business. That's between me and God. Let me give you the word that God has for you. Receive it or not. And at the end of the day, you may not need it after I'm delivered then. You may not need it after I've overcome it. You may need it today like I need it today. If God gave it to me today, you may need it today. So I get up and I give it to you today. But you have no idea what people who are strong, what you lean on, who you lean on. You have no idea what they go through. I have people that I pull on. Thank you, Dr. Bradshaw, your words, your revelation. Way, it, it, it was way beyond. It's way beyond. It was ahead of its time. And I can one-on-one -on -one call him. I can one-on-one -on -one get what I need. My sister, Apostle Venetia, she's on here daily giving you, setting up the prayer line, giving you, giving you motivational things, showing you how to get wealth, pushing every day, but got her own stuff. Got her own stuff. And, and, and then you guys can, you can decide. You have your pickings. There's, there's hundreds of preachers on the, on, on, on the internet, and you have your choice if you want to listen to them. And you can cut them off when you get tired of them and when you don't want to hear them no more. But it takes that strength that you're talking about. Understand this, that strength that you pull on, that strength that you need, that you get sometimes because we help us to one another. Where it comes from, the Bible says that when with the weak say we're strong, I'm paraphrasing. I have to be, if I'm on here being strong for you, that's because God has allowed me to be weak so he can be my strength. So you don't know what we go through. You don't know how we press. But it is a joy to press. I said, God, what do you want me to study? And he had me in 1 Peter. And I read chapter 1. It said something. I read chapter 2. Pretty much said the same thing. I read chapter 3. Pretty much the same thing. And then I read it in the Message Bible. And let me paraphrase it for you. 1 Peter chapters 1, 2, and 3. It was saying that. My suffering was a praise to God. My suffering was an honor to God. It was saying that I had been called to this walk. It was saying that I had been invited in. So it was something that everybody could not do. It was something that everybody could not withstand. But he had, he had equipped me. He had established me. He had called me for, for such a time as this. For the, for, the, for the things that I would go through, I was built for this, as, as you guys say. I'm built for this. Sometimes it doesn't feel like it, though. I'm speaking to those of you. Now I'm speaking to those of you who are the, the, the ones that are being strong for others. We're built for this. And I know that sometimes it doesn't feel like we're built to th for this. Sometimes it feels like I can't take no more. I can't do it no more. I don't want to make another step. I don't want to be bothered with these people. The main people that you're trying to help are the people that are criticizing, talking about you, stabbing you in the back, judging you. And God says, keep getting up and keep teaching them. Keep sharing with them. Keep feeding them. Keep pouring into them. Keep loving on them. I've got to hug you while you got a knife in my back. Why are you slicing me with a razor blade that I didn't even know I was cutting till you leave? I've got to keep pouring in you. We do this. This is what we do. This is our lifestyle. When people talk about the Sabbath, I don't have anything against Sabbath keepers. But when I always say it's a lifestyle, I say that because... Every single day, we have to live a life set apart. Every single day, we have to sacrifice for God. We don't do this because it's fun. Matter of fact, I, I started out a long time ago. I had stage fright. It took God to, I, was, I started rapping. Then I started speaking. I didn't even like to talk to people. And the live, I mean, I can't, I can't, I can't re-record. I can't do whatever it is it is. And there are people that are on the line that are, are judging because I said a, a, a word wrong. Or I might, I know occasionally I could slip nigga in there. I said something that they didn't like. They caught the one word and didn't catch, catch the revelation. They caught the one word. They are pastors, other pastors that'll, that'll come to our members 
and judge us as leaders and say, you need to be over here at this church. You need to be over here doing that. But yet and still, we got to love on them. All of this going on and we still come before you with the word of God. All of this going on and we still share our trials and tribulations. All of this going on and I try to be as very as transparent with you as possible. No, I don't bring, we don't bring you, it's not, we're not being hypocrites. We're not being fake. It's just some of those things we don't bring because we understand spiritual things. Some things we don't put on the live because we don't want your words coming against it. We don't want the warfare that comes with you speaking against our situations. We don't want that. At the end of the day. So that's why we don't put on that. I didn't have to get up on that day that I taught. And I didn't have to get up and say, well, you guys, I'm homeless, but I'm giving you a word. All I had to do was get up and give you the word because God was my source. God is my source. God is my provider. And when he is my source and he's my provider, the strong, that's where we draw from. That's where we eat at. That's where we get restored. That's where our comfort. That's where our act. That's where from from the God who made us, from the God who established us. But don't take it for granted. Call those people. Let them know that you consider them. God said, my people don't even consider me. God said that. Let those people know you consider them. You don't know people's walk. I remember complaining. My mother would call me two, three in the morning and she would be talking fast and, and, and she talked fast for a while. And then after so long, she may even cuss me out two, three in the morning. And I'm like, this lady just, she got to be bipolar or something. It's my mother. I didn't want to answer at two, three in the morning. Did not know that she was in pain daily. Did not know they had told her she was a dancer. Did not know they told her she, they were going to cut her legs off. Didn't know she just wanted to talk to me. Didn't know her strength. Didn't know what she endured. Listen, you don't know what we endure. We teach you about love. We teach you about relationships. And we're trying to figure it out on our own. The messages we give you are downloads that God give us to keep moving. And we just want to, we like the kids in grammar school, we want to share. We want to share. You expect us to be perfect. You talk about the church people. You expect us to be without blemish. But how do you think we even have the information to give you in the first place? Because we're going through it. Because God is speaking to us about it. Because we have to be conditioned out of it. Because some of us are hard-headed too. Some of us are stubborn too. Some of us are set in our ways too. And we have to go through things so that we can get delivered. We have to get daily downloads so we can know how we can keep moving on in a faith walk. Through ordered steps. And just say, I love you. Sometimes when I can tell you, I go through the call from the right one, and the right one is the one with the sincere heart. Just saying, Apostle, I love you. Apostle, I appreciate you. Just letting you know that this, this life is for a reason. Just letting you know that this purpose is it's all for a purpose. God, you got me sharing my business. You got me on Facebook. talking about me and saying that we we scamming and things like that you got me still pressing forward sharing the word with them but God said I was invited to this God said I was called to this God had picked me for this so I'm grateful that God has hand picked me for this but by no means do you think this is an easy walk and I told you I told you Call your mothers, call your fathers, call whoever you deem as the strength for you. When you talk to them, just think about it. When, even if you don't think that they're strength, when you talk to them, you feel better. Call them. Text them. Say something to them. If you got a person that's being a good father, some of these, these fathers are being good fathers. When they could have walked away, it's a lot of them that walked away. 
You don't know what he's dealing with. You don't know men deal with insecurities as well. Men deal with the them the world believing the weight of the world is on their shoulders. You don't know what they're going through. Women, you think we bipolar. You think we just emotional. We can't keep a man because we got all kind of things going on. Yeah, because we're dealing with our own insecurities. We're dealing with looking at our children grow up, wanting the best for them, seeing them go their own way, and, and just praying that, God, all what you had me give them is going to be enough. We're thinking about our men. Are they all right? What are they thinking? Are we doing enough? Listen, we live in real lives. Leaders are living real lives. Mothers, fathers, leaders in ministry, pastors. We are living real lives. Do not put us on a pedestal. Do not make us like glass that can fall off and break. We are durable. We, are, we endure. We are diligent. We pursue. We get up. That is the thing that sets us apart. That is the thing that causes us to be sanctified. We are set apart. We get up when others can't get up because we got the word of God. We move forward when we don't want to because we got the word of God. My press comes from the word of God. When I get on here and I tell you to press forward, it's because I've heard a scripture. I've heard a sermon. I've read the word of God. But you have no idea. See, the difference between people that love you and know you and people who think they're familiar with you people who think they're familiar with you won't catch this word they'll still criticize and talk about me when I get off this line but people that know you and love you know where I'm coming from because they know my journey they know my journey, preaching to you why I'm homeless, preaching to you why I'm being called a liar and a thief asking you to help the church why I'm being called a liar and a thief not being able to hustle because I know how to hustle. But God said, I want it done the way that I told you to do it. I want it done in a godly manner. I want you to teach them how to be godly entrepreneurs. People that come to my church, we know how to hustle. We come from hustling. We come from the world. We come from the street. We know how to do all that. And God said no. And when God says no, that means that we have to be washed. We have to be purged, which means we had to go all the way to the bottom in order for us to raise us back up. He couldn't allow us to be wealthy in the things that we were doing because it would lead you astray. So we had to be the example. We had to be stripped. We had to go get regular jobs. We had to do regular things. We had to go out on faith. We had to do all of those things just so we could do something and be an example for you <laughs> and then when we let somebody in real real close I've seen uh, Minister Don Zetta shown me a, a video from an awesome woman of God that had a testimony a book out I'm going to post it because I want to share I want to share you I may not be on your frequency you may not be on my frequency you may be on her frequency that's kingdom we share I want to share but they're talking about the people that you let in that's why that's why you will say some pastors are fake. They not fake, they're protective. They don't know how to release anymore. They don't know how to be normal around you because you've judged them. Because when they did something, you automatically said they, were, they weren't saved. When, when they made a mistake, you threw them away. You threw it in their face. So now they've got a wall up now. That they don't know how to take down. But I refuse to allow anybody to make me be that person. I refuse to allow anybody to make me become hardened in my heart. Or be somebody that I'm not. Because I'm afraid you might talk about me. I'm afraid you might tell my business. I'm afraid that after I've let you in close. You go to the next church and tell everything. I can't be that person. But I'm saying all that to say. This is what people who lead go through. Not just in church. I keep saying that. This is what mothers go through. This is what fathers go through. This is what pastors go through. Mothers and fathers as we're leading our children. There was a time in, in, in my life I was, I was leading my children. My children didn't understand what I was saying. And still don't sometimes. But they, I love them. They're marvelous. They're smart. The seeds that I've planted. I see the harvest of it. But yet there was a time that they would sit there and talk about me like a dog. Because I was getting on their nerves because they didn't understand. But this message is today so that you can understand. 
You need to understand the people you lean on. You need to understand. And then, and then here's the other thing. People that lead, people that you lean on, people that are strong. If you have to point to them one day, all of a sudden you start to compare yourself. All of a sudden they're not who you thought they were. You're supposed to give back. You're supposed to pour back in. When you have to pray for your pastor or you have to you you have to fast for your pastor, all of a sudden your pastor is weak or they're not who you thought they were. Get your mind right. These people that are strong need you as well. I go through. And the average man don't understand it. And the average sheep may not understand it. I have an apostolic walk. I know who I'm called to be. But with an apostolic walk, I've got apostolic warfare. What does that mean for those of you who are in, who are in church? The higher the level that you're on, the higher the demonic forces against you. The higher the opposition. You may be homeless and you may be able to say, I've been homeless like she's been homeless. But your homeless may have not looked like my homeless baby. Your homeless may have not lasted 15 years. Your moment of Lack may have not lasted 15 years. We got people on the line who have waited for the love of their life for over 20 years. God said it was coming 20 years. So though you may compare yourself, you don't know the walk. So I love you. And I just want to give you an opportunity to love on those people that are being strong in your life. Because listen, I, I feel it in the earth realm. There's a heaviness in the earth realm the people are tired the leaders are tired the leaders are worn i'm worn we need to be built back up we're trying to be built back up and as we're trying to be built back up you haven't stopped asking for what you need as I'm before God with the things that I have on the altar, my inbox doesn't stop. My texts don't stop. I still have to be accountable for what God called me to be accountable for. But sometimes, take a minute and give back. Minister Donzetta is good for it. She'll call me just to let me know she loves me. She'll text me just to let me know, just to see if I'm all right. So I can have enough to give back. Think about it. Think about who you lean on. Think about who you dump off to. Think about who pours into you. Think about that. Call them. Love on them. Forgive them. Throw out your perception of who you believe they are because of a mistake. Throw out your perception of who you thought they were. Because of your limited knowledge. That's all you. You got to understand. Nobody's perfect. Why you got everybody talking about you got to be holy because their idea of holiness, nobody in this earth realm is perfect. But there are people that are uniquely, listen, let me share this with you because I didn't want to make it long. I was, I was in my own worship. There are people that are tailor made for you. You often hear me say that we are on your frequency or they're on our frequency. They're tailor made for Be perfect in the areas that you want them to be. And my message wasn't a global message because I was, I was, maybe it wasn't for you. Maybe it's not your frequency. God did not call me to a mega church. God called me to the tape who's trying to to know how to live this thing without being fake, who's trying to make the transition from the world to living for God. That's who God called me to. Those that have leadership in the street, they had leadership in the street, but they don't know how to do it on this side. That's who God called me to. So when you look at the people that you're pulling from, when you look at the people that you're leaning on, they may not be perfect in the area you want them to be perfect for. They may not be grammatically correct. They may not look the way you want them to look. They may have tattoos. They may, they may not talk properly. They may have a lot of flaws. But are they good for the area that you lack? 
And if so, call them. Text them. Love on them. We need love too. You have no idea what we go through. We're praying for you. We're loving on you. Needing love ourselves. We know God loves us, but we're human. We're in these human bodies as well. So we know God loves us, but sometimes we need something tangible too. And, and then let me tell you something about that. God will not even allow us to have. God orders our steps. So where you get to have the look, let, I'm, I'm going into the relationship. I'm using this as an example. Where you get to have these miniature relationships that keep you going till you get to the right one gotta have us walking a lonely walk until we get to the right one because we can't be contaminated while we deliver messages to you there are certain things that can't be while we give messages to you so while you're able to get things that pacify you because of who we're called to be we're not able to do that let me give you an example in parenting mama single mothers relationship but couldn't have a man in the house because she was raising sons so she had to make the sacrifice she couldn't live the way everybody else lived she couldn't walk the way everybody else walked she couldn't do it the way everybody else do it because for the sacrifices for the children that she raised that's how leaders do that's how strong people do they make sacrifices in their personal lives for the people that they are accountable to the people that they're called to i don't always want to get up and talk I don't always want to share a positive word, but God said, you better share the truth. And whether you feel it or not, whether you, it looks like it or not, whether that's what's in your, in your heart, whether you believe it or not yet, you better share it until you believe it. You better share it until they believe it. You don't know this walk. So again, call those you love. Call those you lean on. And, and if you don't know who those are, just take a minute and sit and think about whenever you talk to this person, you feel uplifted. I have a person that whenever I call them, they make me laugh. I got I to gotta let them know I love them because that is something that builds me up as well. I could be going through whatever and they got a joke. It ain't got to be just them giving me scripture or just every five minutes. Well, come on, we going to pray. Listen, I've prayed. Sometimes ministry comes in a different form. Thank those people as well. Nate Spade, I don't know if you watch my videos, but he's a friend on my page, and he's always got a joke. Charles Davis, always got a joke, not knowing how sometimes we are going through and all we got to do is look on Facebook, and these brothers got a joke that will change our hope. We got to share it. We got we to gotta laugh about it. That will take our mind off the moment. That's ministry. So why you're criticizing because there's a curse word in a post or a curse word on a joke, not knowing that it's building somebody up in their moment. Man, thank you, Nate. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Apostle Venetia, my sister, being family, not judging. Thank you, Minister Donzetta, always putting people before you. Always putting somebody else before your own needs, interceding, even while you're going through what you're going through. Thank you, Pastors Oglesby. Love saying that, Pastors Oglesby. Thank you. Always having the right spirit while you're going through what you're going through. Being an example, how are you still laughing while you go through what you're going through. Thank you. Dr. Bradshaw, always sticking to the word of God. No matter what it looks like, always saying, staying firm on the word of God, pouring in, letting me know that there's no wavering from it. I love you. And I just wanted to share that on this morning. And I'll be back when I'm baby, when I be back. <laughs> Amen.